Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in the last video we set up these beautiful zombies. Now I'm thinking in this video we should obviously set up these zombies both damaging the players and also the zombies spawning. So let's start with the damaging. Let me just remove all of these. Let's go into the script zombie here and let's do some zombie damage, I guess we can call it. And we can just throw that onto the zombie. Like about there. Run the overrides and go into the zombie. Right. So let's make a network object script, network behavior, sorry. And let's figure out exactly how we want to do it. So first of all, we have the player health script. Let me go into this script. And just so we can see, we have the current health here, which is kept track on by the server. Yeah, so the server keeps track of all the health, meaning the damage should also keep track of the health. What? Did I just say the damage should keep? No, the zombie should also damage on the server. That was, <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. So let's run an update loop here, which is where we're going to handle. No, sorry, actually, let's not run an update loop. Let's just check collisions. It should be as simple as that if they just touch us. So on collision enter, we can just run. If we're not the server, we want to return. I don't want to check for tag. So let me just remove this again. So I'm just going to run if other dot game object dot try get opponent out player health. We're going to get player health. In this case, we're going to take player health dot take damage. I think it's called. Yep. Take damage. And then we're going to throw in however much damage that we want to handle here. So serialize field private int damage. Let's have it do 10 damage, not a float. And let's just throw the damage in here. And now this is a part of our scoring system. So let me just have the, the attacker ID be equals to minus one. Now in the take damage field, what we can do here is we can move one step further i believe in here into die and then in the player manager here we can check if the player id is minus one or the kill id is minus one it just won't do what it did right so this is the kill id we're using here so it, if killer is less than zero basically actually if killer is greater than minus one and it finds this that should work and here we just want to say if player is greater than minus one and this then it should work and that also means that it should only set the kills in here and same goes for the deaths it should only set the deaths in here there we go yeah so this should work oh when the player died that way we can just make sure that when we send an attack id of minus one it means no player actually gets the kill only a player gets the death awarded. And this should work. Now, zombies should be able to kill us. Now, keep, bear in mind, this is only on collision enter, meaning technically, if it consistently is hitting you, wow, I died quick. But yeah, I mean, it killed me. I guess it just hit me twice really quickly. So you can see as I walk away from it, yeah, it immediately hit me again and I died. So we probably want some kind of cooldown on this. So let's instead do it on collision stay. And then what we need to do here with this is we want to keep track of the player that we're hitting. Private list player health underscore players we hit the new list and actually let's do this on collision enter and then on collision exit we remove from the list so this is what we want to do so we keep this but then we do the players we hit dot add the player health and we want to do the exact same down here but the opposite way around so let's copy paste this and here we just remove the player health from it this now means that in the update we can basically tick our damage for every time that we give damage so we can have a private float which is uh, last damage time like so and then do we also have a serialized field private float damage interval which could for example mean that we can only hit one time a second per zombie so then we'll do if the last damage time is less than the time the time minus the damage interval no this is not correct i don't like the way it did that logic sorry i should stop using the autofill if the last damage time is greater than the time dot time minus the damage interval that should do the trick that means that we've hit within the last second we just want to return and if not we want to basically award damage to each player in here we just want to do for each players we hit and call player and then we can just say player dot take damage and then we call the damage and the minus one as we did earlier like that this should now work this means that even when the zombie is just staying basically touching us constantly we would still be taking damage once every one second let me actually try and set the player's health up their health 200 and i think it just yeah what so let's go here have the zombie hit me it just immediately swallowed all my life. That's, of course, because I forgot to set the last damage interval equals to time dot time. So it basically just hit me once every single frame. And I think I'm running at around 600 frames. So you get the idea. It hit me a lot really quickly. Here we go. This should work. Or should it? Oh, there we go. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. I'm not a big fan of how this works. It also feels weird that it has to, like, hit me, hit me. Okay, let's do something else. I'm not a big fan of this. I want to make a sphere collider around the zombie. 
and I want this to have a set radius. So if a player gets within this radius, it will hit us. We can technically put it a little bit in front as well since it's actually looking in that direction. So we could put it out here. And then in here, we can instead just do on trigger enter. We should be able to at least on trigger enter. Yeah. And we just, we can actually just remove all of this on trigger enter. There we go. And we will just do the same up here on trigger exit. Same thing. Remove all of that. There we go. Should do the same trick. And of course here, it should only be if is server. And if is server initiated. And that means if it is not not server initiated. It's just because the is server is technically deprecated in version four, I believe, of Fishnet. That's why I'm doing it like this. Now it should be able to always hit anyone who's inside of this trigger in front of it. So it hopefully shouldn't be as finicky as we just saw it was. Try now. I forgot to make it a trigger. Beautiful. Scrolling down, set trigger. Now let's try again. It just, it hits us twice. Hey, I mean, I don't mind, but why are you hitting us twice? Was I in there twice? Uh, okay, wait, hold on. Another check we can also do. We can do and players we hit and underscore players we hit and actually does not dot contain C player health. We just want to check that it doesn't already exist in there. If it does, we don't want to add it again. And it should also only do this if it actually manages to hit someone. Okay. That's why we had to wait a bit for the damage to come. Let's try now. There we go. Now you can see it damages us. Yeah, 10 at a time. We can run away. We no longer get damaged. And as soon as we're close again, it'll, we will get damaged again. Yeah, so the damage works now. We could technically also say, and the players we hit, that count is greater than zero. That way we don't need this in here, because right? I don't like having that redundant, calling the same function multiple times. Okay, there we go. So that works. Now the enemy actually hits us, or the zombie hits us and damages us with a set interval. That works beautifully. Now let's make a zombie spawner. So let's go into the zombie. Actually, maybe this is a game manager. So let's put it in game managers, calling it a zombie spawner. We can go into the game manager, add the zombie spawner in here. Boom. We, of course, want a few things in here. We want to get the private do network object of the zombie prefab. We also serialize field private vector three. We want the spawn size. Uh, yeah, let's just do spawn size. And then we also want the spawn interval. So for example, this is one zombie every five seconds. We can do one zombie every two seconds. You can, of course, dynamically change this. I'm just going to set it to some kind of fixed interval for now. Probably normally wouldn't do that. So let's do a uh, on start client. And of course, this needs to be a network behavior and now we can do an on start client if is server initiated and so if it is not initiated we just want enable defaults because this is handled on the server and we just want to return and now with an update we can check if the last spawn time is greater than the time the time minus the spawn intervals basically the exact same thing as we did before we want to pass this and then we also want to say underscore last spawn time equals to time dot time and then we want to run some kind of spawn zombie method here so let's do that let me make a private void spawn zombie and let's handle that so first of all we want to find the position at which we spawn it yeah so we have the position of the object that we're on and we want to find a random position given within the bounds of the size that we also set. So actually, let me try and do a on draw gizmos. I don't know if you guys are familiar with gizmos, but they are mighty useful to showcase an inspector what's actually going on. So as you can see, I just want to autofill it for me. And this is about what I want to do. I just want to set the gizmos color first. You can choose whatever color you'd like. And then I want to draw a wire cube because this is going to be how we show what our spawn zone is going to be. So if I try and go out here now and actually under the game manager, I'd rather make a new one called zombie spawner because that way we can make multiple of them and just move that bad boy on here and right now you can see it's in zero you're seeing no box but that's because right now we haven't given it any size so let's give it some height let's give it some width let's give it some length and here you go now you can all of a sudden see we're actually getting this red box which is going to be the spawn zone so let's say that we want zombies to spawn over here or we can make another zombie spawner we also want some zombies to spawn over here that way we can make it wider like this less long put it into the ground as well like that and then we can have the zombie spawn yeah just like that we can move around the spawn zones choose where we want to spawn them so something like that i think works just fine we can also go immediately and add the zombie prefab onto them there we go as a network object now in here we want to be able to get the position at which we spawn a zombie that means we need to find a random spot the way that we do this is let's just do a float and this is just going to be our x it's going to be unity engine dot random dot range between our spawn size we're going to take our spawn size dot x and it wants to times that with 
negative half. This should technically work. I see what it's trying to do. It's doing it in one line. I would have done this in two, but this works just fine. So what, it, what we're basically doing, let me try and draw it for you. What's happening here is we have the spawn zone. Let's just say we're keeping track of the X, which will be on the width here. So this is the X axis in this case. What it's doing is right now we have obviously our center position, but the way that our size would currently be working is it would try and get a number. Let's say that this is eight. The width is eight, for example, here and here is eight beautiful drawing then it would try and get some a number between zero and eight and let's say that it gets six because it already times it by a half we now already actually have this move a bit to the left so how it would normally look if we had this spot let's just call that zero 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 right here it would technically be eight out here which means it would be offset from the box as you can see the middle of the box is here and this means it should be offset by a half backwards which is exactly what it's doing with the negative here so and it wants to obviously do the exact same on this side just with the set that should work just fine now we want to raycast this so i want to do a if physics dot raycast and actually for this we also need a layer mask serialized field private layer mask spawn layer mask and now what i want to do is i want to do it from our random x position so i want to make a new vector three from our x from our transform dot position dot y oh and actually i realized i've done something wrong here I need to modify the x but hold on we'll get to that in a second and our set and this will be our transform dot position dot y plus our our spawn size dot y divided by two right so we'll also want to do it in the direction of vector three dot down we'd want to output whatever that we hit as an out raycast hit that we're going to call hit the length is going to be of the spawn size dot y and it's going to use the spawn layer mask like so now we can open that up now what i'm saying i did wrong is right now this x is not actually taking the actual transform position into account we just want to plus this with the transform dot position dot x and same thing down here plus transform dot position dot set this way it will actually take the world position into account of where we just drag and drop it to right so now we are likely at least hitting some piece of ground at which we have to spawn the zombie on. So here we want to, and um, actually let's just inverse this. I think this is typically nicer. We can just return if we hit nothing. You can also do something else. For example, actually, if you hit nothing, you could technically try again. Just be careful because this could technically make infinite loops. You would want to guarantee that doesn't happen somehow. Now I'm just going to return. Now what I want to do is I want the network object and I want to instantiate that. So that's going to be our zombie. I'm going to instantiate our zombie prefab at the hit dot point at some generic rotation because it's obviously going to look directly at us anyway immediately and then we're going to do the server manager dot spawn and we're going to spawn the zombie and this should hopefully just work so let's go and give it a spin see if it works and let me just ensure i did set the time this time just so we don't spawn infinite zombies that was that would be horror oh and i forgot to set the layer mask so this is technically not going to work currently so on the layer mask right now i'm just going to set it to default or yeah i don't think our ground has anything right let me just select it no it's just default there yeah so that does do it so let's try and click play and now we should see once every two seconds, a zombie should spawn. We can then start shooting at. Jeez, they're coming over the hill. And each one of them will be spawning every two seconds, so keep that in mind. Oh yeah, we can't shoot that far, I forgot. Two might be a little bit quick since we have two spawn points. But let's just ensure that this also works in multiplayer. Let me select both of them and set a spawn interval of, let's say, five. And let's try and set this up to play both of them. Here we are. Here's our other player. And yeah, here the zombies are coming to attack him. Now he can shoot them. Yeah, this works just fine. Now we have a fun little zombie game. Some zombies coming in, trying to kill us. And as you can see, it all works in multiplayer. We also still shoot each other, of course, we have to. And just to make sure, they can also damage him, which seemingly they cannot. I'm gonna try and share his screen with you, just so you can see. Seemingly he does not get damaged. Let's have a look at what's going on there. Can we see anything on the player? I can't, for I seem to have forgotten. Player health, no, we don't publicly display that. Okay, let's try and figure out what's going on with that. So let's go here, play health. So we take damage, doesn't require ownership. Should be called by the zombie damage, which is also running on the client, which it shouldn't. So first of all, we do unstuck client or not. Unstuck client, if is server initialized, if it is not, we do enable the false. But I doubt that was the issue though. Most likely not the issue because the player, is... oh, let's try and see. I don't wanna, don't wanna just guess at this point. So let's just try, go. Both of them joined, pick up the AK on this guy. Yeah, zombies come in. Let me see if I can take some damage. Still cannot. Yeah, so that wasn't the issue. Okay, strange. Let's try again. So the zombies should damage, wait. Isn't this if statement just wrong? Let me try and do this. If the player's does hit count is less than or equals to zero, we return. I think it just simply wasn't damaging because of that line. Let's have a look once again. Should work fine, I, I imagine now. Uh, there he is, far away. I hoped, at least. Seemingly it does not. 
Interesting. Okay, well time to do some debugging for us. If the players we hit count is less than or equals to zero, we return, that's correct. If we don't want to fight or attack yet or damage yet, I guess, that's correct. Let's just do debug.log and hack. Honestly, we should get to this part, so let's test this one. Keep in mind, this of course only runs on the server. I would technically didn't test if the server could also get damaged. That's of course worth a test as well. Where are the zombies? There they are. Yeah, so it's not calling can attack. So it's not even attempting to attack. But that's obviously an issue. So as you can see, the server is not calling to attack here, which means something is wrong. So let me try it over here. Can attack one, can attack two. And actually, I didn't even notice if the server got damaged or not. I've most likely just done something stupid here again. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't I save the prefab? I didn't save the prefab. Oh my God, that hurts. That hurts a lot. I just didn't install the damn prefab. Up and forward and radius up and the trigger. Try again now. Should be able to take damage. Yeah, there we go. Now I can take damage. 80, 70. There we go. And now we can attack. 30, 20, 10, 0. I'm dead. Yeah. Okay. And the server, just to ensure, should also be able to take some damage. Yeah. Can also take damage. Perfect. Done deal. You can take damage now. Great. Okay. Yeah. So let's remove the debox and that should be it for this video. Now we also have some zombies spawning, following the players, attacking them, killing them. And yeah, I think right now you have the recipe to set up a pretty fun game for yourself. If you have any other ideas for what to add to this, feel free to let me know. Other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day. Remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe and see you in the next one.